Well, here we're going to talk about the baseball attachment. And here's the baseball attachment. I want to warn you about one thing when you're doing exercise with the baseball, and that's don't do external rotation. In baseball exercises, a lot of times people want to do external rotation because it's a major component of the deceleration in throwing the ball. But when you do baseball, this baseball attachment in external rotation, what you're doing is you're innovating your flexors. And whenever you innovate the flexors, you're turning on these muscles right here. When you turn these muscles on, you're also turning on the coracobrachialis right here. And that means you're impinging the humerus or the shoulder bone. Uh, and that's just not good for learning how to pitch real well. So don't ever use this attachment in external rotation. If you want to do external rotation, use, I'm going to step up the picture, use this uh, accessory strap where the forces are on the back of the hand. And that's because when you're throwing a ball, when you let go of the ball, you're doing X, you're using your extensors or the pullback muscles on the top of your forearm. So that's the thing about don't use this for external rotation. Now, the baseball is really good for one really cool thing, and that's practicing actually throwing a baseball and learning the acceleration and having all that energy from the ground come through your legs, through your core, and uh, out to your hand. To do that properly, with whatever pitcher you're using, you want this pulley to be at eye level. So you see the pulley is mounted at eye level. So it's not down by my shoulders, it's up by my eyes. And what that does is when I get into the pitching position, what happens is that puts the rope at the same vector that it's going to be when I'm actually throwing the baseball. And it also allows me to stretch out to where when I really get stepped down in the, in the, in the throwing position that, uh, that the angle of the vector of the rope and everything is, is the right thing. So I level with the athlete and never do internal rotation. Now with the ball, you can always change the ball in your hand for whatever position or however you throw the ball, if you've got a really kind of, uh, uh, you know, a little strange curve ball, you can you can mount it like that. Or typically, standard grip would be like that. So you know you can play around with the grip while you're playing around with the pitching thing. So then let's take a look at how we stretch out with the pitch with the baseball. Now the really cool thing about being able to <coughs> grip the ball like you have to really grip the ball and have the forces come out of the ball like they are is if you put yourself in a position like you're actually pitching and, uh, and you kind of throw. Well, this is not actually pitching yet. So what I want to do is as I take my stance, I want to stretch out more and more and more and more. And then you can see how you can use the baseball to great advantage just for a baseball exercise. Okay, one last thing I didn't cover when you're using the baseball attachment, that's how much weight do you use when you're, using, when you're doing this, this, these exercises uh, with the baseball. I'd say no more than seven and a half pounds. That's what we've got on the sled now. Uh, it, you can do it with no weight. That takes a huge amount of uh, coordination, but for the, the best kind of feedback for the pitching experience, two and a half pounds would also be good. So the weight that you would use would never be more than, than uh, the seven and a half pounds when you're doing the, the baseball exercises. Uh, and you would always want to start off with the tonic technique first and then move to the phasic. If you don't know the difference, let me show you that just very quickly. This is the tonic technique. In the tonic technique, the rope stays tight all the time. And this is the phasic technique. Stanford model. Phasic technique is like this. Now you don't ever want to do the phasic technique unless you've done at least 30 to 40 reps of the tonic technique first, because the tonic technique teaches all the synergy of the shoulder how to go synergy. Most professional baseball players that you pitchers that use this this technology, and I mean like 90% of them, never go phasic. So if you want to be safe and still get good performance, I'd suggest you stay with the tonic. And that's how you use the baseball.